Hi guys, my name is Nikita Chernyshov, and currently my focus is in the development of uh, concept in uh, uh, the UK, in particular in our corporate store in Leamington Spa. And today I want to share you some thoughts about how you can hack the research tools for building a long-lasting relationships with the customers. And I hope that this will be very uh, useful for all these new countries which Ilya just uh, presented and to our other startups. But a little bit of context of how did we actually started to think about hacking the research tools. Uh, we had a few challenges, as you guys know, in the last year. The first one is to launch the first corporate store in the UK, the most competitive market in Europe in terms of pizza, in the fantastic city of Leamington Spa. The second one is uh, because of the lockdown, uh, some of the team was not in the UK, not in Leamington, uh, and we need to somehow, at the same time, start building understanding and long-lasting relationships between Dodo and the UK consumers. Why is it important? Well, I think Ilya had a great metaphor in his presentation regarding what we want from the franchise partners, that we're actually, it's like a marriage. And it's more or less the same from the brand perspective and marketing. What we want uh, to our customers is not just to sell pizza, because it's really easy, especially for the first time. But we want to build uh, like a marriage, like a long-lasting relationship. And as you can see, any relationship goes and has three pillars. It's empathy, it's how you understand each other. Communication, how do you communicate with each other? And ideally, if your relationship is really long lasting, you should have love. So we started to ask ourselves these really hard questions. How can you not only do the right research, but do it right and differently in the new reality, especially when not all of you can be physically in the city where you're launching? So the solution is try to reinvent and hack the tools that we already need. So now I'm gonna walk you through 10 hacks, which we built as the team uh, in launching the Leamington Spa um, store and actually developing it. So the first one, and you guys know it, uh, this is more about the uh, qualitative customer research, meaning asking them the questions uh, one by one and figure out what really interesting them. Uh, this is a simple tool where you can do that through chats and social media. And sometimes you can even automate it. There's, for example, there is a, a chatbot tool called ManyChats. And uh, this bot can actually help you to pre-program the questions which your customers will uh, uh, answer to you. What is it useful for? It's really great for formulating hypotheses for further validation in quantitative phase. And how do it help us? Well, we found a lot of interesting insights on local ingredients, on what is local trust means for the customers and what toppings they're looking for. For example, we were really amazed that a lot of them um, uh, asked for anchovies and we put it as a hypothesis and then we validated on the quantity phase and now we have it as the topic. Another hack which is uh, very interesting is that you can do that face to face through Zoom or Skype or Google Hang, whatever you have. But the differences between the chat and face-to-face -face is the cultural thing. Now, in the UK, uh, people sometimes have a really hard time to give you the bad feedback or negative feedback face-to-face. Uh, -face. It's the cultural thing. So the chat thing is kind of making it anony anonymously and make it for the people much easier to give you the negative feedback, which we're actually looking for. But the beauty of this one is that you can see the genuine reaction from the customer. So now I will try to show you the clip and you can see what I'm talking about. So yeah, the dough is really um, crispy. Is it good? And I think you get that on the first like bite, which is good. Mm -hmm. did, did you like that, that crispy bite? Yeah, that's, 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 I think that's yeah. important, you know? And like at the, um, the bottom as well, like the crispy bottom, which is good. I'm gonna try the other one. I think the prosciutto one is more crispier than the pepperoni because I didn't really get the crisp mm, yeah, crispy. Yeah, I couldn't hear it. Yeah, so you see me and Ben, it's our guardian of the taste. We're torturing the customer about the crust. And what we realize is that the crust in it is actually making this wow moment. And when the a pizza has this crust and this sound, like, then it's actually a completely different experience when pizza or pizza dough doesn't have it. So that's a, 
a, a great insight that we put in actually in production and quality control of all the pizzas that are going uh, through our shop. Now, another interesting thing is that through this tool, you can actually dig out some insights which you might not even see. So this is another example. Let's look at it. I think the pizzas definitely, they look nice in the pictures. I prefer the way it looks in, on, in the box, weirdly. Um, I don't know whether maybe it's because it, you get a few more of the, like, the imperfections are like charring on the crust. But I don't, I, I don't know how that would look in a picture, you know. Um, I think um, I would say just just because I take a pit, pictures of a lot of food, yeah. <laughs> and in just especially the um, the one Ben's got the prosecco one, it looks. I know they're real because I saw you taking the picture on Instagram, but they look fake, and I think they've been like over edited. If that makes sense, like absolutely, yeah. No, I absolutely hear what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It just looks a little. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, that's <laughs> So this is Kat, and she's actually a food blogger and food photographer and uh, her boyfriend. What they've seen is that our pictures uh, that we use on the site or on our social media, they're overexposed. They are too bright. And for British customer, this is actually a signal that it's fake, that it's not real. Now, what they say, and that was proven consistently from other British consumers, is that the more real the picture looks like on the side, on the uh, social media, the better the quality perception, which is completely different from the Russian brand that we have. Because we, and again, we ask ourselves, why are we seeing the same thing differently? And it's all about the context. Because if you look at the British consumer, and especially in Leamington Spa, the people there, they live in the environment where they have 50 shades of cream color. And I'm not joking, this is actually true. And that's why they really appreciate the. Uh, the, the small nuances of how the picture looks like. And we put this inside in the production and uh, in, in how we do the social media. And later we're gonna put this in the reshooting of our pizzas to make them more looking more real and more quality. And this is just another example which we digged out from the recent researches where we were trying to see what customers are seeing in the pizzas when they're taking it for the uh, takeaway for, for the pickup. And uh, we found one thing which actually very similar to uh, our Chinese colleagues is that customers are really appreciating that when they bring the pizza home themselves, uh, the temperature is very critical, which is of course I'm being kept in obvious. But the thing is that the customers in the UK, they don't really uh, kind of think that the longer they walk uh, with the pizza box on the on the cold weather, and believe me, in the UK it can be cold weather and uh, the snow as well, then the colder pizza will be. The problem is that the cold pizza and the warm or hot pizza, these are completely different experiences. Now what we're trying to do, and again, thanks to our colleague from China and from Russia for sharing this uh, tool, we're trying to test the thermal state to see whether customer would appreciate the temperature and that we will get uh, results within a few, um, a few weeks. Another hack. Now we go from qualitative research to quantitative research. Now we all know what quantitative research is. It's when you do the survey, uh, when you launch it, and then you get a lot of data from a lot of customers. Now, the beauty of this one, this is a pre-marketing, is that you can actually start researching and convert your free customers, A, to share the information, and B, to actually become your first real customers. Because when the research is over, then you get their data from the customers, and then you send them via SMS or via email, uh, the code to try the pizza for free. And you you really need these beta testers, as we call them, because they give you also a lot of uh, valuable data on how your pizza is actually behaving. This is my favorite. And it's actually not me that found it, but uh, Katya Landreva, who found a fantastic hack on how to do observational or anthropological research. What it is. This is actually one of the most valuable research you can ever get. Uh, what it, it's when you actually observe the customer and not asking them any questions. Why do you need this kind of research? Because one thing when customers say something, and usually when customers say something, they want to look a little bit better than or, or different than they actually are in the real life. 
when customers are behaving, especially in a natural environment, they cannot lie because they basically do what they do. They wake up in the morning, they uh, get the food that they want, they go from the shop, and then you can actually see what kind of brands they buy, where do they order food, what kind of food do they order, what do they order if they have friends over, etc. So this is a great research on getting the under the skin and the real behavior and usage of your audience. So how does it work? Book Airbnb in the city or country you're going to, and then live with the owner and family, and then observe, and at least live there for a week. And usually by the end of the week, you have a good kind of relationship. You can open up your card and say, look, I'm launching a pizza store. Can I actually ask you for the pizza? And then you do the real customer development as in the previous researches. This one is pretty hard, uh, but it's also very valuable in case you have a goal like we had to adjust the brand to the local market. Now, semiotic, it's the science about the symbols. It's the science about the signs. And you know, in every culture, there's a different interpretation of different signs. For example, we were trying to understand what does the trust and openness means for the British consumer. And uh, to do that, you actually need to A, Stage one, find how these keywords are reflected in the mass culture in the UK. So find like the movies or, or the books or anything that reflects the openness and challenge there. Then interview the Brits, try to understand how they actually perceive the trust and then validate it. What is it for? It's to get the understanding of how the British consumer are actually interpreting our brand key values and how we should adjust our brand. And here you can see how we we saved out uh, uh, the, the brand from the Brits. This is also one of my favorite ones because it's really easy to do and it helps you to get the understanding of the total addressable market, meaning how, many, how much money there is on the town or the city, and to get understanding of your share of the wallet or share of the market. And what I love is that uh, our operational team is now having as a habit and once a few weeks they executing. So how does it work? At the end of the day, and usually pick up like a peak day, Friday or Saturday, you go to the competitor and get the check. Now, what you're interested in is in the check number. Usually, most of the competitors, they have the check number one in the morning and then check number X at the evening. So what you need is you need to get this X, and then you can calculate knowing the average check, which is more or less the same on the market, you can calculate the revenue. Now, knowing the different ratios between the different days, you can calculate the weekly revenue, the monthly revenue, so on, et cetera. Some competitors, they don't have the zero checks in the morning. They have some funky numbers. Now, if that's the case, then you need to do the two buys. You need to buy one, make one order in the morning and get the check number and one in the evening, and then just uh, uh, do this minus this, and then you get the number of checks per day. Hack number seven how you can launch Aaron Digital without having Aaron Digital. Now, I'm a huge fan of Aaron Digital uh, as the methodology and as the tool, but unfortunately, not all the countries will get it uh, during the launch. But the good thing is that you can do the same. So how? Take SurveyMonkey, take a survey from Aaron Digital methodology, get your clients that made a purchase this day, or actually, ideally, usually within six hours, and send them SMS with the link in the survey. And then it takes, well, it takes us around week, week and a half to get 100 respondent data. And 100 is usually a valid number. And then you can do the same insights for to understand how to improve your product, your menu, et cetera. Like for example, here, we see that 33% uh, of the customers are actually willing to have an option to create your own pizza. And we looked at the Romanian guys that launched this one, uh, I think like a month ago. And last week, we launched our Create Your Own Pizza in Leamington, and it's performing pretty promising. So hopefully, we will extend that uh, experience to all the customers soon. Hack number eight, cast dev your digital products. Now, this is, I think, sounds obvious, but you can also do that distantly. You can also do that via Skype or, or Zoom or whatever by actually splitting and uh, the customer flow and get the feedback on each stage. Now, for example, in this particular case, what we've done is that we look that the onboarding, the first screen is really important for the UK consumer because he really needs to understand at the first stage, what is he doing, either it's delivery or pickup. Uh, we don't have restaurant in our concept in Leamington, so it's basically deliver or take away. And also the postcode is the most important attribute for the address in the UK. So this is also the insight that we got. Hack number nine, you know, 
there is a lot of uh, information already available in the market, and especially if the market is advanced. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, digging out the right uh, questions to the Google. Like, for example, this one, uh, we found out uh, from Deloitte, a great research which showed the great trends on the delivery market. And also, if you have aggregators or you have public companies, uh, like competitors, like we have, for example, in the UK, then they have to uh, publish their reports. So just dig out the reports, get the insights, share it with the team. Now, this one is my favorite because it's really simple. It takes you like two minutes to do but it gives a lot of valuable data on the location that you're choosing. How do you do? You go to the Facebook uh, ad cabinet, and you put the radios that you're targeting for the delivery, and then you get on the right, the potential reach for your customer. So this is a great simple tool of actually defining the market potential in terms of the audience you are going to deliver. And this is my final hack. If you have a chance, find a partner, passionate as you are to help you grow in the research area, both in the methodology. Now, we were extremely lucky to find a great Russian startup, which actually doing research in the UK market. The guy's names is our UXSR. And what they're uh, delivering to us, a great improvement on the better methodology of how to ask the question, to get the new hacks and actually supporting us in doing the interviews and in supporting us in doing the quantitative surveys. So the final question is, well, we want to build a customer relations. How does it show? What does it bring to, to the business? Now, of course, it's not only the research that brings the, the results to business. It's a combination of everything, the product, the operation, the marketing, everything. But what we see now is that the return rate of the old clients, like if you look at the last week of February, it's the number of this green line, the number of old clients actually exceeded the number of new clients, which is a good sign that customers are sticking to us. Another in, uh, very important metric for us is the percentage of positive feedback we get in social media and in our app. And uh, uh, we're really we're really happy that this line is also uh, improving. Now, our target is to be above 95%. We're still not yet there, but we do get consistently some great feedback, like in this one. Great pizza, I've been countless times now, and barbecue chicken is definitely my favorite. Highly recommend the best pizza joint in town, period. That's what we're working for. And the most important probably for the business is show me the money. So we just launched Lemington at the end of December. So the first two months, the full month of operations is January, February. Put Lemington in the first place uh, among all our five pizzerias. But I just wanted to remind you that the first four pizzerias, they still work on the old concept, the American style pizza concept. And Lemington is the new one that works on the Roman style dough. And my final thought, is that research is not a one-time thing. And yes, we do have a lot of data in Dota.S and we dig out a lot of data, but you need to complement this data with the qualitative research of your customers and doing it constantly by digging out the insights, put them in hypothesis and test, and then put them in product development and do that again and again and again. And my final, final slide is thanks to all the UK team that supports and have the same passion towards researching the customers and hacking. Thank you so much, guys. And have a great week, everybody.